Daniel Madison, welcome back to the Mad House. This is a banger of a video, wouldn't you agree, Charlie? In this video, I'm gonna teach you the mad bug. That might not make sense to a lot of people, but it is a device that you use at a card table which allows you to switch a dealt playing card or a playing card on the table for any other playing card without your participant knowing or having a single clue what just happened. As far as they can tell, a card is placed face down on the table, you turn it over and it is the desired playing card. I am Daniel Madison and this is the Mad Bug. So first of all, I have a few essential items with me. One of them is a ridiculously oversized double-sided stick tape. Surely, Charlie, we've got a smaller... <sighs> yes, we do. We've got a smaller sticky tape. We don't need one that big. Um, we've got a piece of A4 black paper um, that we're going to fold in a very specific way. And I have a deck of playing cards in my hands. And this is um, funks, many, many funks from the bottom of my everything. Um, this deck landed in my hand from Emily Slights. I'll leave a link to these playing cards to her Instagram in this video. What a beautiful deck of playing cards. Chapter one, the box is designed to look like a book and I like my decks to um to look worn and torn and like used like it like a good book. So I imagine that um, when this deck itself has been worn and used in and out of your pocket and, and you're roughing all the edges up, it's gonna look like an old book that is worth reading that has been read a thousand times. The box itself, beautiful, uh, the deck design itself, um, I'm just a huge fan of it. I just really am. It's a beautiful deck of playing cards. Uh, chapter one, write your own story. This is a prototype. Uh, so Emily, funk. Um, so I'm gonna use this deck to explain how to make the, <clears throat> excuse me, COVID, <laughs> to make the, to, uh, to make the, the map book. So before we get into it, what is a bug? A bug is something which allows you to stick or temporarily have a playing card underneath the table awaiting your switch. So it would be here and then you would switch it for another playing card. How you hold it here and how you keep it held here for long enough. I was gonna say thousands, but realistically, there's probably more like a hundred different methods. And for me, simplicity, minimalism, um, and this has become my all time favorite because if this is something that you see underneath the table, um, it's unsuspicious, it's unsus, Charlie, what's the word? Thank you, it's unsuccess... Charlie, what's the word? Charlie, it's unsuspecting. <laughs> right, we got there in the end. So, what you wanna start with is by taking one of the playing cards out of the deck and holding it so that it is about maybe a centimeter of the edge of the paper. As you can see, I've pre-folded my a card I made a start before this video. So this is the fold line. Now if we hold it all together, turn it over, you will see um, almost a centimeter of that playing card. Now I want this, uh, the rest of this playing card, this brief, I want the rest of this playing card gone. So I need to chop this off. So I'm just gonna mark it to start with. In fact, we'll, we'll take the joker out. Which, by the way, check this joker out. This is a spilt ink blot with a revelation of Emily's favorite playing card, the Eight of Clubs. 
lovely, lovely idea. I love it. So feel free to use scissors. Um, I prefer the meat cleaver method. Now this isn't a precise science, um, but I'm simply going to fold it at the at the score line, which is here. Fold it back on itself. Fold it back on itself. <laughs> and now, Charlie, I'm just going to rip it. I'm not even going to cut it. I'm going to rip that mother. And we don't need that part anymore. So now we have um, essentially what is the mad bug. Um, obviously, this is very long. Um, now this comes down to you. Um, this can be used to hold multiple playing cards. So you can have multiple options of playing cards. Uh, once this is stuck underneath the table, um, you'll be able to hold a number of playing cards under there so that you can switch the appropriate pl uh, playing card. We're gonna stick to one playing card. And from teaching you this method, you will be able to you, uh, expand on the method itself so that you can make a, mid, a much bigger version of this and now we're going to focus on uh, a single playing card so um, i'm going to put emily uh, first of all i need a bit of sticky sticky tape i'm going to stick that down this is strong stuff too this isn't going to this isn't going to come uh, come apart so i'm going to put the playing card in there now I don't want it to get stuck. So I want to give myself a little bit of room for this card to have freedom to move around a little bit. So I'm going to move it over by about, what would you say that was? Three centimeters, Charlie? Three centimeters. So now we need to do the same thing on the other side. We need to go three centimeters on, roughly, which is about there. Again, meat cleaver method. In fact, this would be much easier, much better on wood there we go now I can save this for another bug that I might put under uh, maybe that side maybe under that table I'm gonna keep hold of this but this is my bug now I need to do the same thing I'm gonna put some double-sided sticky tape on the other side just so that we can create a little pocket for the bug playing card. So essentially, there's my bug. It is simply a pocket, a black pocket, which is gonna allow me to put this playing card in like this, with just enough room uh, for purchase for when it comes to the switch. Now, where do I place this under the table? Good question, Charlie. I'm gonna show you the underside of my table, my desk, my practice surface, and this is usually where I would sit, so my switch would happen here with my right hand, so this is where the uh, holdout, where the bug needs to be, right about here. Notice how the black is all the way to the edge of the table, now if you look down above that, you're gonna see that playing card sticking out, but don't worry about that because our per our perception, the perception of our participant, uh, which I will show you on film from that point of view, this cannot be seen. This is well protected, so don't worry about that. So at this point, um, I know where I need to put this um, bug. I know where I need it to be. This is why now I remember why I brought this this uh, big roll of sticky tape because it's perfect for sticking this down. So let me just stick some double-sided. I could do it with some scissors, man. I could do it with some. This is why I brought this big sticky stuff, and this is heavy duty stuff. Now I'm going to stick it. Chop the end off. Make sure that's pressed down enough. 
peel the back off once again make sure that um, I'm, in, I'm going to be in the right position which is here so this is where it needs to go round about here so remember black to the edge of the table like this and then I'm going to add a lot of pressure up notice I'm adding pressure up with a playing card inside of it um, this just allows for that extra room inside so that there is always going to be enough room for that extra or extra space for that playing card to slip in and out of and if you look at it head on like this it's quite flexible it's quite bendable and it's easy to slip in and out and from the if I leave it that's all the way in right now if I come around here from to the let's dodge this wire from the participants point of view so now I'm sat down can't see anything now I'm stood up can't see anything now I'm leaning forward can't see anything now I'm leaning right over the edge and I still can't see anything I've got to be pretty much hanging over the edge of the table before I even see that playing card so I'm going to introduce a deck of playing cards um, not just a deck of playing cards a beautiful deck of playing cards chapter one playing cards by Emily Slides uh, link in video description uh, this is not a paid promotion uh, I just love this deck um, so the performance is this there's nothing in the book yet there's nothing there yet because I don't know which card I'm going to put in there yet I'm going to take these playing cards out of the box and I'm going to ask my participant to name freely name any playing card or if they have a favorite playing card um, and just for the sake of it uh, again we're going to go with the nine, uh, nine of clubs and if I can get it right again uh, nine of clubs this is gonna happen as you're chatting as you're talking for example if I lose the nine of clubs back into the deck and I give the cards a shuffle and I say um, what's your favorite playing card do you happen to have a favorite playing card when I'm shuffling um, I'm looking for the playing card that they name and there's this interesting method that sometimes works for me now that was just look the nine of clubs ended up second from bottom perfect for me i can steal from this position but an idea that works for me if i uh, works well for me if i put this back in the middle is a i can't remember what, what they call it but it's like a twisted dribble like this in that twisted dribble look at all the index that you can see there and i also clocked the nine of clubs somewhere over here or it might have been eight of clubs either way um should by now because we've used it so much it should have a natural uh yeah so nine of clubs so they named the nine of clubs but once they've named that playing card here's just a simple idea i see a lot of magicians doing this or oh, nine of clubs any reason why this is your favorite playing card and let them talk as they're talking uh, oh no reason no 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 i just like it whatever you know uh everybody's story is different i find it i find the nine of clubs and i push it upwards like this now notice that this is not the nine of clubs this is the six of diamonds i put it on the table and at this point we are relying extremely on trust now at this point your participant has no reason to distrust you whatsoever because we have not explained what is about to happen as i pick the deck up at this point i'm gonna let that bottom playing card pop off i think that's the uh technical term i'm gonna put it back into a gambler's cup and i'm gonna put the deck down and i'm gonna put my hands on my laps like this now i don't know if this camera can see it but i'm when my hand goes in in fact let me turn the camera when my hand goes into my lap i push that card up like this so it's outward like this i cut the deck i put what they believe to be the nine of clubs in the middle 
I give them the deck back, back and I say, please, uh, shuffle these cards to your heart's content. At this point, all the attention is on the shuffling. I don't need to look at the bug. I don't know. I don't need to know where it is. I can help myself by feeling it. I can put my hand here and feel where it is. The rest is just slow, patient movement. You will feel that gap and then the card will go in. And as soon as you feel it going in, you can then relax, move forward, let go, come back here. Always put your hands back on the table. Always make a point of having empty hands. Don't do any of this jazz hands nonsense. There's no need for that. Um, and at this point, right from the beginning, they named their favorite playing card or their random playing card to be the nine of clubs. We've managed to steal it from the deck and load it into the mod book. At this point, I'm gonna ask her to do the same thing. She's gonna deal playing cards one by one until she's ready. And when she's ready, once you're ready, I want you to deal me the playing card that feels right. Deal it face down to the table right in front of me. To help her deal that playing card closer to me, I'm gonna lean back a little bit like this. This encourages her to deal that playing card a little bit closer towards me like this. I can move this forward a little bit if I want. Which playing card did we name at the beginning? Nine of Clubs. You shuffled that deck all that time. You dealt those playing cards and you dealt me this playing card whenever it felt right. It was a complete free choice. Let's see which playing card you dealt me. It is time again, once again, to execute the mod bug switch, which looks like this. And then push it towards them. We've lost the five of diamonds. Uh, we can just leave that on our lap in a very comfortable position and we can allow our audience to react accordingly, specifically Susan. Um, at, at this point, they're probably looking through this deck for a duplicate nine of clubs. When I go on to show them another trick when I take the deck back, I'm already going to have this card, the five of diamonds ready in a gambler's cop, ready to load to the bottom of the deck to clean up for the next trick. And that is how you achieve the mad bug switch. As you might imagine, there are a ton of ideas that can be applied to a bug device under a table that you're working on, the whole one playing card or the whole many playing cards. Let's talk about Tyrant some point soon, but for now, um, Emily, every, everybody go show Emily some mad love, some mad respect for creating such a beautiful deck of playing cards. Um, I can't commend you enough. Um, I love this deck and it has its own space on the Madison Wall of Fame in the other room. Um, for whatever that's worth, I'll be back soon with some more dope tutorial and some more surprises. For now, all I ask is that you subscribe and if you perform or use anything that I offer here on YouTube or at the Malayans, stick a hashtag Daniel Madison on there so that I can come and find it and check it out. Seeing if you're doing a good job, maybe leaving some personal guidance directly from myself. Um, as for now, I'm Daniel Madison. That was my book.